Yeah, well, I was uh, born in Peckham, South East London. Um, I was there until I was three, and then the family moved to Loughborough Junction, which is between Brixton and Camberwell, and uh, there are railways running past Loughborough Junction. There are three separate railways pass through there. The, uh, the railway goes over the roads on, on, on bridges, and the, the roads have got trams on them as well. So on moonlit nights, when the, there's not much cloud about, the, it's a jolly good target from, uh, from the air because of the shiny railways and the, the tramways. And we found out in the bombing of the Blitz in London that uh, we were targeted. And uh, of those nine bridges where the railway was going over the roads in Loughborough Junction, six of them were hit during the war. One of them was hit both ends at the same time, and the whole uh, bridge fell down, just landed smack down on the road with four railway lines running across it. And a uh, magnificent sight to see this railway bridge lying on the road. I was one of seven children. We all got the mumps and the flu and chicken pox and measles like every other uh, child did. I was at school, I started school when I was five. The, um, the, the class was packed. At, uh, most times we had about 44 boys in the, in the class and uh, no girls. And that uh, was on until I was age 11. And then another school in the area closed and a lot of girls came in. So a lot of the boys had to move out and we uh, had to get then used to girls being amongst us. And uh, I found myself rather shy with girls who seemed to be too bold for me. I was called up in 1941 when I was 18. And the um, Americans came into the war in 41 with Pearl Harbor. And uh, we, um, I was into the 70th Battalion of the Royal Sussex Regiment, the Boys Battalion they called it. I did 16 weeks training in Reading, to up Berkshire, and uh, then we came down to Milton Barracks in Gravesend, and uh, we were told by the Colonel that we were going down to Margate to do some coast defence because it was expected the Germans would still invade, and the Colonel got us all on parade and he said, uh, the War Office said to me, we're going down to Margate, he said they offered me transport, but I said to them, my men prefer to march. We groaned, but we did march. It took three days to get down there, and 20 miles a day, and uh, we um, carried everything, just carried everything. And because of the Luftwaffe, we um, walked on both sides of the main road going from 299 down to Margate, and seven men would be behind each other in crocodile form this side, seven men this side, a hundred yards between them, and, uh, and another seven, a hundred yards, another seven, and both sides of the road we just walked down, and, um, because when the Luftwaffe came over, we scattered, it much easier to scatter. So we went, there was 200 of us taken from the battalion, they wanted uh, 200 uh, more out in North Africa, and we went to uh, uh, Liverpool, we were there while they got the convoy together and uh, we set off and we went round the top of Ireland, atrocious weather and uh, we were absolutely sick. We, had, we were living in sort of swing beds in, in the troop ship and as you looked that way you saw a pair of boots and as you looked that way you saw a pair of boots, that's uh, how close it was. But uh, with everybody being sick, it, the mess, dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. But anyway, when we got uh, over the Bay of Biscay, we um, didn't still didn't know where we were going really. And um, so no one had told you no, where no, you were headed from. No. And uh, on the way across the Bay of Biscay, there was a loud voice came over the, uh, the loudspeaker saying, "Watch the cruiser, watch the cruiser." And we had six destroyers protecting us, and and this cruiser. I don't know what the name of it was, but. Um, they said that we we're going to have anti-aircraft gunfire practice and the, the destroyers banged away and the Hawlicorn gun on the deck of the troop ship, that also banged away. And it was quite impressive and noisy and we, was, we were very impressed. But uh, then the, this voice was saying, watch the cruiser. 
So we looked at this cruiser and the, the Royal Navy was going along in majestic, like, like the Royal Navy does type of thing. And suddenly the, the cruiser disappeared, a sheet of flame, flame yes, it's covering the whole tree, it disappeared and all this flame and, uh, and then smoke. Smoke came out from all that, from every part of the cruiser, and it disappeared. And the um, this this smoke was laying on the Atlantic like it was a mattress, a huge mattress of smoke. And uh, we were aghast. Where's the cruiser? We thought it had blown up. And um, then out of the, the the end of this smoke, out came the cruiser. Um, in, you know, the, the, the navy was showing off actually saying that with the Navy in charge, you're quite safe with us type of thing. And it wasn't until we saw the Rock of Gibraltar that we realised we were going into the Mediterranean, which we did. And we went down the Med and we got off at uh, Algiers. And eventually we were in Tunis and uh, we um, had to get on lorries then to go to the front line. And we uh, were going along, it, was, it came to the evening time, and the lorry stopped and the driver seemed to be a bit panicky trying to get us off this lorry as quick as he could and we didn't know what he was fussing about. But um, anyway, he, we, we got off the lorry and then he did the fastest three-point turn you could ever imagine. And he whizzed off back down the road where we'd come along and uh, soon after that, there were some bangs going on. We were being mortared by the Germans. We were in the front line. And uh, so that was why the lorry driver was very quick to get out, out of it. And uh, as we went uh, toward the, the mountains, the, the Atlas Mountains, the foothills of the Atlas Mountains, uh, a guide came down and shouted to us to come this way. And the mortars carried on because the Germans, of course, we couldn't see the Germans, but the mortars were coming down on the road, which they knew was there. And as we went up the mountain, of course, the mortars, they weren't there anymore because we were in there in the mountains, we didn't know which way we were going up to the battalion. But that was our introduction to the front line. In, in the First World War, men went forward in daytime and they just walked into the machine gun fire. But we always went forward at night. And so we would have a meal and then we would start going forward, walking. But behind us, as we walked, we'd look back and we'd see the gun muzzles of the artillery banging away and the, the, the flashes of light as the, the, the hills seemed to be alight with brrrr, like that, all this going on like that. And we had the shells going over it, like that. And um, just overhead, we, we almost felt that if we put a hand up, we'd catch one. And, um, and they exploded in front of us, a good way in front, right? But, and that barrage would go on, and that's how we went forward in Africa. Um, the, as soon as the barrage stopped, the, the shouts went up, get going, get going, move, move, move. And so we had to start hurrying because we learned afterwards, of course, that the Germans didn't uh, want to stay around where the, bomb, where the shells were landing and they retreated back much further. So when we met the Germans, of course, um, they fired at us and we fired at them. Um, and I still stayed alive, but we, we both got hit. And when a bloke got hit dead, he, he, was, he was grunted. Grunt. And if a bloke got wounded, he would yell. And you knew the difference between the two of you. And on the way back, one of these bombers, the, the, shell, the bombers they were dropping were armour-piercing shells, so there was a delay, delayed fuse. And on the way back, one of these bombers dropped a bomb on us. They could see us, we were right open in these German trenches, just out looking over at Tunis. And the, um, this bomb came down, and we all swore that it landed right in front of us. But the point is that it landed in the, right in the middle of us and it didn't explode right away, it went down. And when it did explode, the ground that we were on just lifted it like a huge earthquake. And uh, up went the dirt and the sand and, and the sun went out because the, the, the looked up and there was nothing up there but dirt and sand. And it was all gloomy everywhere. And uh, of course, all that I had to come down, but what a, what a surprise that was. And um, so we got smothered in dirt, but we had our tin hats on, so we, our hair didn't get uh, dirty. But um, 
as the dawn broke, we could now see to this, and we heard sounds, and we were looking for movement, and we were already expecting gunfire any moment, but all just these sounds and running feet, and hundreds of women and girls were running toward us, and what the, the noise we heard was they were shouting, Tommy, 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 and they had flowers, and they just smothered us with flowers on their ear, and the sergeant kept on, keep moving, keep moving. So, Finished and during that time, we did the victory parade through Tunis. When the march was here, it was magnificent. The aeroplanes overhead, all the crowds cheering. Generals Eisenhower, Giro, Alexander, and Anderson, the big four in North Africa, take their place on the rostrum, and the victory parade through Tunis is on. Robed Spahi cavalrymen heading the parade, as 28,000 troops from all parts of the French Empire, from every state in the American Union from the British Commonwealth of Nations march in a great allied column down the palm-lined avenue of Gambetta. I was lined up one day and we were going to go over to Sicily and uh, we got on boats, <coughs> landing craft, and we went across the Med, the Med and, um, and, in, and, and air, aeroplanes were going overhead towing gliders and the gliders had paratroops in them and they went on ahead, and we, we did all night going across the, the men. And we were going along, climbing all the time. The, the, the track was perhaps about 12, 14 foot wide. We were making a lot of noise with our boots, and we, 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 there was no sound from anywhere else, but all of a sudden there was a shout. And, and we stopped dead, and that total silence, it was a German shouting, he must have said, halt, we goes there, and then you could see, and you could see German uniforms, but of course they could see us, and they buckled to us to get out of the way, so did we, but uh, you just fired guns wherever you could, type of thing. it was um, it was dangerous, but blimmin' exciting too, And um, but that was what Sicily was like. So we, do, you think, do you think you were more scared or excited? Both. Both. If you'd won scared, you was an idiot. Yeah. Well, you was, you yeah. know. No good, like a film star, you know, big man, me, type of thing. Somebody would just go, Brr, yeah. you wouldn't be a big man anymore. Yeah. No, no, no. But, but, uh, but Sicily lasted um, six weeks. Uh, but that's, um, we never slept. Well, we did in the daytime as much as we could. We never took our boots off. We never took our boots off, and um, when it was all over, the, uh, when we did take our boots off, we had to lay on our backs with our feet in the air, and the ammo came round, and he was just saying, metal lady spirit, metal lady spirit, metal lady spirit, and the two corporals with him with buckets of metal lady spirit, and they were washing our feet, and we were, the feet was all red and blistered, because we had their boots on. And we spent a restless night because we knew the Germans knew we were there. And uh, in the morning, we heard tanks, and we hadn't got any anti tank guns, and there were no tanks for us, we were just infantry. So we saw a wood further in, so we made a run for it, and uh, we got into this wood, and the tanks were coming um, across from over there, and they saw us and gave us a rat tap, but uh, we, we safely got into the wood. We were hiding behind the trees and the tanks were parked around the edge like type of thing and um, you could hear the engines and we, we I, I got right down in the, in the roots of this, this tree that I was hiding behind um, our, other blokes were standing up, I, they was a bit silly to do that really <laughs> anyway the, 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 the tanks, they, fi they fired with their shells and they knew that they would hit a tree soon and the, the, the shell would explode and shrapnel would go sideways and so but they catch, catch the blokes, you know. Anyway, I was, it was only, it might almost seem like just over by that wall that this, this tank, and um, he, his machine gun wasn't touching anything, not me anyway. And he fired, and his, his shell hit this tree that I was hiding behind, and the ground went up, and, and I, it seemed to me that I don't know quite what happened, but it just knocked me absolutely sideways. I think I went up in the air because I suddenly got a picture. I know this sounds daft, but I, you remember Tom and Jerry? You remember Tom and Jerry? You know, Tom sometimes got blown up in the air and, he, and in the air he was running. 
then when he landed, he and he was in that sort of thing. And that went through in my mind. I, 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 I knew I'd landed, but this picture was in my mind. It was almost making me laugh, really. But I was so blown up, like I was absolutely in deep shock, really. I just found myself running. I had no control over myself at all. Just, I couldn't talk. I was finding it very difficult to breathe. My heart was banging away. And I was just an idiot, really. They could do nothing with me. They drove the tanks away, and what they did with me, they just took me down to an airfield somewhere and flew me back to Sicily. Um, and there was a, the, the Americans had been in Sicily, of course, and they had got a little field hospital there. And I went into this field hospital, and they, they could do absolutely nothing with me. I was just a complete idiot, really. And, um, and, uh, they, they kept me there three weeks, but in the end, they, they just chucked me out type of thing. They flew me back to Africa, and I went into the 97th British General Hospital in Tunis. And I was in there four and a half months, and I'd be lying in bed, and my heart would be going slower and slower, and then it suddenly would stop. And I, I was thinking, you know, and then start, it would start going again, and it would gradually go faster and faster. And in the end, it was going like a machine gun. I'd leap out of bed and run for my life. I couldn't help it. Mm. And they were shouting out, stop him, stop him. And they floor me and dragged me back to bed. And, mm. um, I get these toes down again. But um, now I'm all right now. Um, so when it all finished, when, I, when war was over, where, were you still in Italy? When it... I was still in Italy, but um, I was told that um, if I went back to the job that I had beforehand, they'd let me out a bit early. And I was let out of the army uh, in January 46. 46. I went back to my old job. I had to stay a year. And so after that, I got so unsettled that um, I just got another job. Nine months later, left, got another job. And I, I could not settle. I absolutely couldn't settle. And in the end, I thought myself, I'm, you know, absolutely. So I decided to go to Australia, pay me ten pound to go to Australia, ten pound. But on the week before I was going, I noticed that the Odeon was going to show a film that I wanted to see. So I just didn't get on the boat. I was so irresponsible, and um, so I never got on the boat. Never went to Australia. And uh, then I got another job. Then Must I have been a good film. <laughs> yeah. But uh, then in the end, I, I did go to Canada, and I went to Canada, and uh, I um, got a job in Toronto selling bread door to door. Yeah. yeah, and what about in terms of how you think it should be remembered today? What do you think would be a, a good way for young people to remember all of those who, who gave up their lives for, for, no. for, for our freedom today, effectively? Yeah. Well, it makes me want to cry to this, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Les, thank you. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for leaving this. Or I'll show this off in the actual assembly. Yeah. Um, and we'll put it in the library so anyone who wants to see it can. What's the time? Have we over then? We are no. just about on no. time. Yeah. But well, that's all true. Anyway. Thank you very, very much for mm. coming in and for talking to us. Yeah.